Hello and welcome to Digital School Wales. In this video, we're going to be learning how to design an infographic using Adobe Creative Cloud Express. Now, in this video, I'm going to walk through how to create an infographic exactly like this. But what is an infographic? Well, an infographic is a still image or design which gives a load of information on one topic in a way that uses a lot of graphics and makes it easier to understand. Before you can start designing your infographic, you'll first of all have to do a little bit of research work. Now, as you can see here, I've kept some facts and figures in a Google Doc. Now, it's up to you what the topic of your infographic is going to be, but I've decided to create an infographic on computer gaming because that is one of the focuses of this year's Safer Internet Day, which is coming up soon. Now, if you're also interested in computer gaming and you'd like to follow a course of lessons on coding your own retro 80s style computer games with your pupils, then click on the link below this video or go to digitalschool.wales forward slash coding one sample and you can get totally free access to the first lesson from the first activity of this pack. If you're in a little bit of a rush or you like working from templates, remember that Creative Cloud Express has got thousands of templates for you to reuse and remix as you see fit. To use these templates, that's all you have to do is use the search bar at the top of the home screen, search for infographics in this example. Now, personally, I prefer using a clean slate, a fresh piece of paper when I'm designing on Creative Cloud Express. So let's jump right in and start designing our infographic. Log into Hub and open Adobe Creative Cloud Express. Click on the plus to start a new project and choose custom size graphic, standard, tall. Once the page loads, click on text to add your text and type in your title. Then have a look at the aligning options and place your title where you'd like to see it. Next, we're going to look at fonts. Under more fonts, you can search by category. Here, I'm looking for a nice futuristic font for my computer gaming infographic. Next, I'm going to click to add a shadow and an outline around my text. Now it's time for us to start thinking about our color scheme. So on the top right, click on the colors tab. Here you can look at the different color palettes and cycle through them. You can even customize your colors. If you feel you need to tweak the line spacing or your outline and shadow, you can do that at any time with the title. I'm going to add one big icon in the middle of my design. So I'm going to search for gaming and find a controller. I'm going to change the color of the controller. I'm also going to add a line from the icons, like the cable for the controller. And remember that you can always tweak your layers using the layer stack. To be able to use the controller as a speech bubble, I'm going to hide the buttons by adding a circle from the icons and changing it to the same color as the controller. There we go. Now, apart from your main icon, you also need areas for your other facts and figures. So you could add these by going into the icons button and then searching for something like badges or you could search for certain shapes and add them in. But if you're feeling adventurous, why not head into the design assets and have a look in the elements, maybe look at the geometric shapes and find some interesting looking shapes in here that you can use as your bubbles for the facts and figures. So I've got two here and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate them I'm going to use the flip horizontal and vertical tools and resize and position them so that I've got four circles for my facts and the controller in the middle. To get these to tone in with my color scheme, I'm going to apply the duotone filter to the shapes and then I can pick colors from my color scheme for these different shapes. And here you can see I'm going through each shape one by one, applying the same process but with different colors. Now let's add an icon for each fact. I'll start off with a map of the world on the controller where I'll be talking about how many players there are worldwide. Then I'm going to go to each one of my shapes where I'm going to have separate facts and figures and add suitable icons like a dollar when I'm speaking about how much money is made from computer games and a mobile phone when I talk about mobile gaming and a stopwatch maybe when I'm talking about how much time people spend playing games every week. 
I want to hide that counter hand on the stopwatch. So to do this, I'm just going to duplicate one of those purple circles that I created right at the beginning of the video, rearrange it on the layer stack, and bring it in so that I can put it on top of the stopwatch and hide that hand. Now let's start adding our facts and figures. So I'm going to click on text and select add your text. And then I'm going to type in my facts and figures. Now, it's really important that these are clear and easy to read. So after I've typed in my first fact, I'm going to go into the fonts, into more fonts. And then under the clean category, I'm going to look for a font that's going to be really easy to read. After that, I'm going to highlight the most important pieces of information in this text box. Now to do that, that's all I need to do is click on the plus next door to main style, and then I can select the areas of text that I want to highlight and I can format the colour, outline and shading as I like. It's a really good idea to stick to the same font for all of the facts on your infographic. So rather than start from scratch, why not duplicate your text boxes for each one of your facts and then you can reuse the highlight style and the font and your align options for each text box. Here you can see I'm adding a rectangular icon so that I can put that as a background to the mobile phone so that my text and icon on the phone are going to be even clearer to see. And then on I go duplicating my text boxes and changing the text and changing the highlighted lines so that I can put in all of the facts from my research document onto the infographic. For your final piece of text, don't forget that you need to add your name and your school name to the bottom of the infographic. Remember to save your project with a sensible name and press enter. And then if you'd like to download your infographic, that's all you need to do is click on the download button. There we go, well done. Your infographic is complete. Now you can use this same formula and series of steps to create infographics on any kind of topic that you'd like. Now remember, if you're interested in that free coding lesson on creating 80s style retro games, then click on the link under the video or follow the URL that's at the bottom of the screen now. Thanks ever so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.